What became the Studebaker Corporation started as H&C Studebaker, a blacksmith shop in February of 1852. Brothers Henry and Clem opened a shop in downtown South Bend, which at that time was just a fledgling community on the shores of the St. Joseph River. Soon the company grew. Younger brother John M. Studebaker joined the firm in the late 1850s. Other brothers Peter and Jacob Studebaker joined up in the 1860s and they now call themselves the Studebaker Brothers Manufacturing Company. By the turn of the 19th century, the Studebaker Brothers Manufacturing Company uh, was the world's largest manufacturer of horse-drawn equipment. Studebaker entered the automobile market by uh, basically marketing vehicles built by other companies. Studebaker had the worldwide dealer network, they had the name recognition. Uh, what they didn't have were uh, facilities to build automobiles, so they purchased uh, several companies, uh, the largest being the EMF Company of Detroit, Michigan. By this time, the Studebaker Corporation was really looking at getting out of the horse-drawn market in the uh, late teens, but World War I intervened. Uh, it was still a war fought mainly with horse-drawn vehicles, so they kept uh, producing a lot of equipment for World War I. But after the war ended, Studebaker, they knew the horse and buggy was on its way out, and they began overhauling the South Bend plant to produce automobiles and slowly began phasing out of Detroit in the 1920s. Studebaker was going uh, great guns in the 1920s. Unfortunately, their uh, leaders really underestimated the Great Depression. In 1933, Studebaker was broke and entered receivership. Uh, they were able to reorganize. They convinced the bankruptcy court judges that the best way to satisfy their creditors was to continue building automobiles. And the company was actually able to keep going uh, and by 1935 was back on the road to profitability. Once we get into the 30s and 40s, Studebaker was looking at styling as their calling card. They realized they didn't have the volume that the other manufacturers that they had to produce a better product, a different product, something that would set themselves apart from the market. That formula really propelled them to their greatest heights in the late 40s and early 50s. And uh, even today, those Studebaker automobiles are looked at icons of American automobile design. Weight is the enemy was one of their mantras. They wanted a very efficient automobile, but they also embraced really the aircraft styling theme that's reflected in uh, Studebaker's bullet nose models of 1950. You know, there's a big old propeller sitting out on the front of the car and it looks like, uh, you know, just a World War II fighter airplane coming out of the sky. They looked to Europe a lot for inspiration, and that was a direct influence on Studebaker's masterpiece, the 1953 Starliner. It's probably best described as a jazz quintet amid a, a whole field of chamber music. It was low, it was rakish, it was half a foot lower than anything else on the market. It completely separated Studebaker from the rest of the industry, which was you know, very perpendicular and kind of boxy, and here the new streamlined Studebakers come out and everyone's going, wow, look what Studebaker did. Studebaker was trying to make it on 4% of the market when GM was selling, you know, 45% of the market. Studebaker just did not have the resources to compete at that level and unfortunately were not able to compete past the 1960s. Studebaker's closing was a devastating blow to the community and there's, there's no two ways about it. It was probably the single most tragic occurrence in, in the history of South Bend. 7,000 employees were basically thrown out of work two weeks before Christmas in 1963. But the community did respond. And by 1966, unemployment was back at pre-closing levels. And if you look at South Bend today and the strengths it brought, you know, that was really tested by Studebaker's closing. And I think the community came out much stronger for it. And even today, there's three degrees of separation, it seems, from Studebaker at almost anything you point to in this town. Hospitals, churches, parks. The automobiles aren't being built here anymore, but Studebaker is very much a part of South Bend's cultural fabric. The Studebaker National Museum's collection includes everything from some of the most popular Studebaker vehicles made to uh, one-of-a-kind show cars, prototypes, and other vehicles you're never going to see anywhere else because there's only one of them. Some people uh, will say, oh, my first car is a Studebaker, my parents had Studebakers. Others are just learning about Studebakers for the first time and think they're cool cars. There's so many different ways for people to experience the Studebaker story. We're just delighted that uh, many of them come by and do so. We're just a short drive away.